Imagine, if you will, I'm wanting to build a Lego structure. And in this Lego structure, I have 20 pieces of Lego. I have blue ones, which are one and a half grams, let's say, and the red ones are one gram, and I have 10 of each, and I build my structure. And now that I've finished my structure, I ask the question, oh, I wonder how much this weighs? So I figure, well, hold on, I have 10 red pieces, that's 10 grams. I have 10 blue pieces, that's 15 grams. So I must have 25 grams. But then I second guess myself, and I weigh it on the scales. It's not 25 grams, it's 20 grams. Where has those five grams gone? Well, welcome to the world of nuclear physics and binding energy. Now before we discuss the, the concept of binding energy, I want to just introduce a new unit to you to help us better explain the concept. And I want to introduce the concept of atomic mass and how we measure it. We need a unit that is actually a little bit more helpful rather than using kilograms. So we have a unit called the AMU or the atomic mass unit, which is simply a standard unit in mass and nuclear physics. It's based on carbon-12. And if carbon-12 made up of six protons and six neutrons, if its atomic mass is set exactly 12 AMU, since carbon-12 is 1.99 by 10 to the power of negative 26, we now have an atomic mass unit that is 1U is equivalent to 1.6605 by 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. We're going to use numbers that are a little bit more friendly to us. So as a result, the mass of a proton in atomic mass units, or AMU, is 1.00728. The neutron is slightly heavier at 1.00867. And if we wanted to know the atomic mass unit of an electron, it's 0 0.00055. Energy can be converted into mass and vice versa. And that, of course, is due to E equals mc squared. If we have our 1 AMU and we convert that to energy, how much energy is that? Well, the energy, of course, can be calculated using standard SI units and mc squared. Mass, of course, is the mass in kilograms and energies in joules. But with the reminder that we can convert energy into a smaller unit called the electron volt, our 1 electron volt is equivalent to 1.602 by 10 to the power of negative 19 joules, we end up getting a conversion that 1U or 1 AMU has the conversion of energy of 9.315 by 10 to the power of 8 electron volts, or what we can say 931.5 mega electron volts. So that's our conversion between mass and energy. And that's a value we're going to be referring to. So now let's have a look at a larger atom with a number of nucleons. And this is where I'm going to tie in my analogy that I did earlier. Let's have a look at a chlorine. Chlorine is made up of 35 nucleons. It's made up of 17 protons, 18 neutrons, and of course it's got 17 electrons. What are their respective masses? And this is like our Lego pieces. With 17 protons, I end up getting 17 by the AMU in terms of protons. I get this value, 17.12376. Similarly, I get the mass of neutrons, equaling 18.15606. And then, of course, I have my mass of electrons as well. So this is the combined mass of my chlorine atom if I add all those up. Okay, so and if I do the mathematics, I get 35.28917. That seems fine. All your boiling blocks should equal the sum total of the parts. But we do know the mass of a chlorine atom. It is equal to 34.980175, and that includes the electrons you'll notice that this is now less than our initial mass. We have lost mass by putting our nucleons together. So what happened? Well, we clearly have a difference in mass. We have a difference 
of 0.309 U in mass units. If I now convert that into its energy, then all I need to do is multiply this 0.309 by the total amount of energy conversion, which is 931.5 mega electron volts. I get 287.83 mega electron volts of energy that somehow has been converted. Where has that gone? Well, that is the energy that is binding my nucleons together. What is the binding energy? It is the energy required to hold the nucleus together. This energy is gained due to the conversion of the mass defect by Einstein's E equals MC squared relationship. Now, clearly, larger atoms having more nucleons and therefore more binding energy gained will have larger binding energies. Does that mean larger atoms are having stronger binding energy overall and therefore more stable? No, that isn't the case. So really, that's not a good measurement of how stable the atom is. If you want a really stable atom, you need a very large binding energy, but you need to also take into account how many nucleons we have. And so what we're interested in is in the binding energy per nucleon. So we divide the total binding energy by the number of nucleons, and that gives us a good measure of how stable an atom is. So what we do now is we graph all our elements on a periodic table with respect to the binding energy per nucleon. Y-axis, we put the binding energy per nucleon and it can be as up to a value of 8. On the x-axis, we put the mass number, which is simply the total number of nucleons. And when we graph that, you can see we get a very characteristic graph. It's a very famous graph in terms of nuclear physics. This hydrogen's down here. Okay, and then helium over here, this is helium right here, and this is hydrogen, and hydrogen has to be there because it actually only has one nucleon. But as you go from left to right, we start to see an increasing binding energy per nucleon. In other words, the atoms become more stable in this direction. But on the other side, what we find is we get more stable if we go from large to small. And so therefore we go more stable from right to left. Now the question is, is what is this pinnacle right here? What is our most stable atom? Well, that happens to be iron. And iron is the most stable element on the periodic table. It is the largest binding energy per nucleon. Now this has significance later on, particularly when we want to look at fusion and at fission and nuclear decay. There will be subjects of future videos. But in essence, we've now discussed why certain atoms are stable or unstable when we look at binding energy, and specifically binding energy per nucleon. And now we know where that energy comes from. Hopefully that's helped you understand binding energy per nucleon. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. I hope you can subscribe and like and make any comments in below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.